Adobe Comp is a very cool layout application that integrates really nicely with Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, as well as Behance. I've got a little document here that I created earlier. As you can see, it's got some images in there, it's got some text in there, and this is fully, like, completely created in Adobe Comp. And let's start and see how we create a document like this. So on the left-hand side, we'll tap on the plus, and we can now choose a format. There are lots of predefined and preset formats, but you'll notice that if you, if you tap and scroll to the bottom that you can see that there's a new format option as well. So you can actually pick your own size. I'm going to start out with an A4 portrait document. It's a blank document. Now one of the first things that you might want to do is maybe set up some guides so that you can kind of align your content a little bit better as you're placing it on the document. In the top right corner, there's a gear icon. When you tap that, there's a couple of options there. First of all, uh, Adobe Comp has smart guides, which means that if objects are aligned to center or edges of other objects or to page centers, little guides will appear, making it nice and easy to line things up. There's also some Canvas tool tips. You can see what format you're currently using. And I want to add some guides here, so I'm going to tap on Add. And we're now in our guide adding mode. In the top left hand corner, the leftmost top, I'm tapping that there and I can kind of see that I want to create a column grid. I'll add three columns there by tapping the plus. And I think the gutter, the space between the columns is a little bit too much. So let's bring this down maybe to 10. And we we'll also want to have maybe some margins, I might increase these all around the, all around this 12 point everywhere. And so that's that. And I want to add an extra guide at the bottom where I'm going to place some additional images. So the second icon in the top left corner allows you to place individual guides. I want to grab and place a horizontal guide and once that's added in, I can tap and drag that into position if I want to. So I'll just say maybe roughly up here, we're going to make some room for some um, graphics there. You can see the X on the far right hand side. So if you were to add multiple guides and you wanted to delete a guide, you can click activate that the guide by tapping on it and then just hit the X. Once we're done, click in the top right corner, the done button. And we've got a bit of a grid that we can work with now as we're putting our design together. Now comp supports gestures. That means that you can draw with your finger on the screen or with a pen for your tablet device and thereby create image placeholders or other shapes, um, headlines, text and stuff like that. If you tap on that gear icon again, there's actually some drawing gesture help right there. And when you tap that, it will give you an overview of all the gestures that you can make and what they will do. So for instance, we'll see you can draw a square or a circle or a uh, rounded rectangle, image placeholders and so on. Might be worthwhile taking a screenshot when you're first starting out with comp and keeping that handy so you so you remember what gestures to use. Okay, I'm going to start by adding just some placeholders here. Single X, and notice how that automatically snaps to the guide. That's really cool. Now I want to create a couple of exact copies of this. And at the bottom of the screen, there's a series of gray buttons. The one on the far right, when we tap that, has the ability to duplicate a selected object. And you select an object by tapping on it. So I can duplicate that, and I'll duplicate that again. And I can now tap and hold and drag that. Tap and hold and drag those into position. Now, if I wanted to place some graphics in there, the way to do that is, again, select the, the placeholder frame and then tap the image icon at the bottom of the screen. And you can now grab your graphics 
from a number of different areas. You can maybe pull graphics from your Creative Cloud libraries. In this case, what I'm going to do is I've actually got some graphics stored in a folder in my Creative Cloud files. There we go, Adobe User Group. And I'll select a couple of images from here one by one. So we'll take maybe that one for close up and open it up. And I'll in the same way start to add a few more images. So we'll come back to you once I've dropped the rest of the images into these placeholder frames. Okay, so we're back now and the images have been placed and Comp has automatically sized them, but you might want to resize the images within their, their placeholder frames and crop them slightly differently. So to do that, first make sure that you tap once to select the frame and then tap twice and you can see that you've now got hold of the image. And then with two fingers, perform a pinch Control. So just push your fingers apart to make the image larger or bring the fingers closer together to make it smaller and then tap and drag to position the image within the frame and crop it slightly differently. I will continue to do that for the remainder of the images and I'll get back to you as soon as that's done. Okay, so we're back. I've resized things a little bit. I actually think I want to just move two of the images around. So to move images around, tap and hold and then just drag them into position. And you can see that they will automatically snap to the guides as you do that. Okay, there's another image that I want to add, but I haven't actually got that yet. And rather than drawing a placeholder frame first, I'm going to tap on the image icon at the top of the screen. And this time I want to bring in a photo from Adobe Stock. I live in Perth. I'd like to see uh, a nice photograph of our city. So I'm tapping onto Adobe Stock and I'll type in Perth. And I've actually already licensed one of the images, but literally you can, if you've signed in with your Creative Cloud membership and your Adobe ID that's associated with that, you can purchase these images right now or literally just grab a positional one for the time being and then purchase it later. So I'm going to grab the one here that I had already licensed earlier. I'll open the asset. I don't need to save a preview because I've already got it. And I'm just going to add that to a stock images, or I'll add it to my um, Adobe User Group Demo Creative Cloud Library. Once the image is placed and downloaded onto your play page, you will see there's a little cloud symbol there that indicates that it's associated with the Creative Cloud Library that you've put it in. I'm going to drag it up to the top here, make that wider by dragging the handle. And then again, just double tap and reposition. Oops, double tap, get to the content and just move that up a bit so that we can see a little bit of the beautiful Swan River. All right, so we're up to adding some text. I'm gonna add a headline. So that would be a gesture of drawing a box with a dot. And to format that headline, I can first of all change the size by dragging that little slider that you're seeing on the right hand side up or down. To do additional formatting I can tap the T at the bottom of the screen and select a font that I've downloaded from Adobe Typekit. I'm going for League Gothic here. I've downloaded that one a little bit earlier and then tap back on fonts to just go back within the screen and back on text to see all of the text settings that you can apply. You can increase or decrease the size as well by tapping on the plus and minus buttons here, change the alignment, and I want to make this into capital letters. 
Uh, the other thing I want to do is apply a little bit of tracking. So just because I've now got capital letters, just increase the letter spacing a little bit here. Maybe like so. All right, because this is for the Adobe user group, I want to change the lorem ipsum text that we've got sitting right there to genuine text. So double tap on the text and you can now type the text that you want. And then tap out of it and again a single tap to select it. You can still increase the size dynamically by dragging that slider up or down. Another way of adding text if you don't want to use your gestures is by tapping the T at the top of the screen and you can see that I can either pull items from my library. In this case what I want to do is get a subheadline and I'll just drag that into place. Give me a sec. And make that bigger. Text is automatically populated. Format that text again. Maybe actually more lines. I like more line spacing. And don't want that to be aligned to the guy. I'm happy with that. All right. There's one other graphic that I want to bring in, and it's actually a graphic that I've placed in a Creative Cloud library. So I'll tap on the graphic icon at the top of the screen, and in this case, we are clicking on My Libraries on the demo here. You can now see that the photo from Adobe Stock has been included in that library as well. And I'm now going to include the Adobe User Group logo, dragging it into place and sizing it. And once again, you can see that it's got a little cloud icon icon on it. So it gives you an idea that it's um, sourced from a Creative Cloud library. So one more thing that I want to do at this stage is put a little background color behind the entire design. And I'm going to do that by adding a rectangular shape. And we'll size that to be the full page. There's a little bit of a problem here, isn't it? Yes, I can hear you say it. It sits on top of everything. Well, Adobe's thought of everything. So to the left of the trash can icon on the bottom of the screen, there's a little stacking order. Oops. Stacking order icon. Always make sure you select the object first. And I want to drag this all the way to the bottom. So I'm dragging that slider all the way to the left. I can now change the color of this object by clicking that little gray box. Again, I actually added some a color theme to the Creative Cloud library for the Adobe user group. So I can pick a color from that if I wanted to. I'll pick that color there. In the same way, I can change the color of my text and make that, uh, let's go through the themes, change it to white so it stands, stands out a bit more. So at this stage, what you've seen is really how you can produce content with Adobe Comp. And we're now up to a point where you want to send it and maybe do a bit more work on it, in this case, in Adobe InDesign. So I'm going to tap that arrow up icon in the top right. Okay, here we have the artwork now in InDesign, and you can apply additional settings to it, move objects around, resize images and what have you, apply drop shadows or other effects to, to your content. And as you notice, it's opened it up as an untitled file. You can now save that as an InDesign project and continue working with it. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to Adobe Comp. Have fun being creative with it. And thank you for watching.